Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so good evening once again, and uh, let's get it started on uh, with SDR. So yeah, uh, today is actually 28th February and it is uh, Indian Science Day. So uh, this presentation is uh, I'm dedicating to all the known commercial spirit and uh, uh, community worldwide who are actually doing a very good job. And uh, uh, specifically, we have here one such legendary person, uh, Arvind. So I want to dedicate this today to Arvind. Thank you, Arvind, for everything what you are doing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you are praising too much. Yeah. I am doing a very small contribution. Not really, you are modest. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so the uh, let me just clearly uh, state the objective. So this is a very introductory session covering basics of uh, SDR applications, uh, architecture, and uh, some details of popular and cost-effective SDRs, hardware, and then uh, along with that, open source software tools and systems. So if if the system allows me, uh, then I will be basically would like to show some basic and uh, interesting application using the SDR hardware and software. So I just want to add here is that this primer in this primer, I'm not going, going into the details of communication signal processing blocks and uh, how they are implemented in either in analog or digital domains. Okay, contents. So the SDR and where you used basic architecture types, applications, architecture of RTL SDR. We will hear this term quite often today in our in my talk. Uh, then then I will also be giving a quick overview of TX and RX SDR. And then quick demos if it's allowed. And then in the end, we can have a Q and session. Okay, so yeah, so this just I'm starting with a very basic radio receiver system. I'm assuming that everybody who is present in this uh, session actually is has seen this type of diagram uh, in their uh, technical life, either in graduation or maybe later on. Is that assumption valid? Is there somebody who actually has not seen this type of picture? Okay, looks like everybody has seen. So we so we basically typically uh, if we see a, uh, I mean I'm talking in terms of the receiver. Uh, so we have basically two type of uh, section in any radio receiver system. One will be the of course the antenna, and then we have this uh, radio frequency components, the which we call generally radio, even in uh, popular language. And then uh, we, we have something like all the baseband processing. So the signal is basically brought down to the uh, baseband. That means your center carrier frequency is DC. And around that, we have all the signals. And maybe typically it has been either in analog form or uh, digital samples. And then finally, we get a, our desired signal. Okay, so here there is no such uh, concept of uh, uh, the software, hardware. It's just a functional view, right? So then how do we define a SDR? Okay, we have already spoken about it. There are, uh, so we, we see there that some modules which are there typically implemented in hardware and uh, some in the software. So if we go by the definition of the this term SDR, so can we say that any system, any wireless system, uh, since the software word is coming, is totally a piece of software which is implementing everything in software 
everything when i say everything everything in this picture and then it is fully configurable everything it is doing without any analog component everything software right so is that possible maybe it is not possible uh, at least till now it is not possible maybe some 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 futuristic technology might come uh, by which we can actually uh, do everything in software that means you just connect antenna or, and then everything it just goes into the uh, the software so uh, just to show now uh, going to some more uh, pictures so we have basically a, the older generation systems wireless radio receivers uh, is basically most of the processing is being done in the rf and analog there may be multiple uh, uh, if stages right and finally the uh, in the if we look looking at the receiver part then everything comes uh, uh, to an adc analog to digital converter and then the software is actually everything software when i say it may be a programmable dsp it may be a uh, it may be a uh, host based system or any uh, it it may be a fpg or it may be an isic anything okay then then the second generation of wireless radio came so what it did is that you can see that it has actually removed some rf stages only uh, one set of mixer is there so the signal is probably coming down to the uh, if and then it is being sampled now in this type of architecture the adc has to sample at much higher rate compared to the the oldest generation right and then the those samples are being sent to the software and uh, uh, the processing is happening right and then i am showing the uh, basically the the modern radio systems typically a, uh, for example our on uh, uh, the mobile right mobile handset so there we are taking in uh, the samples from the antenna analog samples and then after some very basic uh, basic filtering and lna we are directly sampling it so this since the uh, the signal frequency can be very very high this adc and uh, on the other side on the transmitter side dac these need to be uh, run at extremely high sampling rate that means the load on the software increases correct so just a question uh, so when you say a very high sampling rate it still has to obey that nikes sampling theorem yes and uh, yeah that's correct and uh, in case of the band pass signals it it actually it can actually have the twice uh, the sampling rate can be between the twice and the 2x and 4x type of sampling rate also yes so uh, what we have actually uh, what we are saying here is that uh, we have got now we have seen uh, this second generation and modern radio systems so in this lot of things are being done by the software in the modern the more signal processing is happening in the digital domain and maybe in the older one somewhat less and maybe at the lower uh, speed so uh, can we call them sdr the answer is yes but let's see further any wireless system can be called sdr which uses a hardware which can do certain minimal 
RF analog processing. So I'm referring to the, uh, the most modern system and rest of the processing can be done by software. So there is one more additionally, one more point which we should stress here is that the, it is not just that hardware and software are decoupled from each other. When we say ASDR, ASDR means the software is literally defining the uh, configurability, controlling parameters of the even the RF analog part through some interface. So, uh, that, so here I'm going to state is that a true software radio, software itself will configure controls RF parameters, and that's what which will define the whole functionality of the radio per se, based on some certain requirements. So typically, uh, the parameters of the RF part, which can be actually controlled from the software, is the so, uh, carrier frequency, bandwidth of the narrowband signal, sampling rate, gains of the RF analog stages, decimation factor, and all. So uh, I, I think now it's it's very clear that a software defined radio is called software defined radio because software is actually driving, defining the whole functionality of the full radio receiver and transmitter. So any questions here? So uh, I, I will just quickly run through that. A typical SDR based receiver will look something like uh, the, there is an RF tuner, that means a LNA and then a mixer, and then directly ADC is sampling the high speed signal. And then probably in a digital down converter, which may be implemented in say in FPGA, or some ASIC uh, digital down converter, and then it is being passed on to the DSP. Now, when I say DSP, this DSP actually uh, can be, uh, processing can be done on programmable DSP. It can be a x86 based system, or uh, maybe it, it can be even a Raspberry Pi. Uh hey, Nitin. This is Dave here. Yeah. Uh, I have a question regarding this uh, software defined radio. So what are the other use cases other than whatever uh, you are showing here? Meaning software defined radio is a big, uh, I mean, big umbrella term, right? And there there must be some other use cases, not just, uh, you know, playing a FM or AM radio on onto your laptop or a computer, right? So what are the other yeah, use yeah. cases? Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'll come to that. There are quite a few. A big list is there. We'll come down to that. Just hold on. So, uh, so basically, now now we have actually uh, understood what exactly is a SDR system. So, so it also means that. Actually, almost all the radios which are there in our in, in our I mean in the system, I mean all the radios which have happened in a recent 10-15 uh, years actually are all are software radio because, uh, for example, mobile phone the that is the most common example, and even say for example set-up box receiver, so everything is software radio. But but then there are two broad categories of software defined radio. One is the special pur uh, purpose SDR. So uh, special purpose when I say is that the the whole uh, software defined radio actually is, have, is actually dedicated to a certain type of task. For example, mobile phone, whatever SDR is there in uh, is running in our uh, handsets is actually a special purpose SDR because it is optimized for power uh, consumption, cost, size, uh, Typically, it will all use RF filters 
and then there will be direct conversion zero if uh, if that means a uh, the the ad in the receiver is actually sampling at very very high rate and after that everything all the processing is being done uh, is being done either in specialized silicon fpga dsp cores or maybe x86 arm graphics core so the special purpose sdr is special for a special uh, and for dedicated purposes now there is another category of the sdr which is called general purpose now the the whole my actually talk today is uh, focused on the general purpose sdr because it is very interesting for uh, for for a community of uh, academia r and d hobbyist and enthusiast and even for product prototyping okay so a general purpose sdr will actually have uh, may have rf filters it may may have a direct conversion receiver that means a high speed adc and then uh, it will have a, a usb controller chip ethernet controller to interface to a host machine let me just show it in the in a uh, picture so here i am actually showing how it general purpose sdr looks like so the general purpose sdr uh, basically is having a uh, is operating in a certain frequency range and in this uh, it can uh, it can have multiple sampling rates also and uh, the sdr hardware is basically connected to a software part sdr software processor through some certain uh, general purpose interface like usb or ethernet so the general purpose sdr actually is general purpose because uh, it need not be optimized for certain metric it its main uh, focus is on the configurability uh, uh, controlling various parameters uh, running in a wide input frequency range and sampling rate controlling the gain stages everything okay so the uh, this is what the whole general purpose sdr looks like almost every general purpose sdr looks like this type of two block two blocks hardware part and then software part and then they are connected through a general purpose interface okay so when i say the uh, the software part um, i can actually have uh, the it can be a, again a raspberry pi it can be a x86 system even arm based system anything i it can be actually uh, uh, linux it can be windows and then it it can be running multiple uh, software based gui based systems or the general c c++ python type of uh, application gnu radio so it uh, that can be uh, all all come under the category of the str software side i think we need as a question we need as a question nitin okay yeah, yeah nitin hi. i had a question hey how are you yeah hi thanks nitin i had a question this uh, picture that you are showing right on the sdr hardware you've listed several for example rtl sdr hack rf some blade rf and so on right is there any place where the, let's say the high level specs of these for example the frequency range or the sampling speeds or something is captured in how yeah, does one decide which one to go about yeah 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 we, uh, yeah uh, we need yeah i am having a slide later on where i will be showing some okay. some of these parameters of these so but i am assuming yeah, that that you. it's very clear now that uh, the what what a general purpose sdr looks like yeah thank you yeah so we actually have uh, uh, now now coming to the target areas so the general purpose sdr actually is very useful and interesting for amateur radio enthusiast if you just want to spectrum wave sniffer then that's also very good and then 
of course, for quick prototyping in academia and R&D. So yeah, there are multiple type of SDR wideband where it covers a broad frequency range. So for example, it can start from 500 kilohertz and going up to all these six gigahertz or a narrowband SDR, which operates only between uh, one to 1 1.5 gigahertz. That can be a narrowband SDR. Then we have got a category of full duplex, simultaneous transmit and receive and half duplex. Okay. So, yeah, so I think uh, again, wireless standards where it, those can be used. Yeah, I, I will not. Uh, uh, yeah, so the commercial applications are also there for software defined radio. So, I mean, using a common, uh, common SDR hardware, you can actually, uh, you can maintain a common hardware and then you uh, change everything in the software. So that way, once you uh, actually uh, have got a common uh, uh, SDR hardware, you can use it for a long time. So that's what it means that future proofing. You change everything in the software part. OK, so interoperability, enhanced flexibility, cost efficiency. The, the cost efficiency part is clear because you don't need to really change the hardware part very often. You once you design it, use it for longer cycles. And then because of the more digitization, you can have an improved spectrum utilization also. OK, now coming to the SDR, the evolution itself. So the uh, it, it's quite recent. Uh, uh, and now when I'm saying SDR, I, I mean gen, basically the general purpose as well as the, the uh, special purpose SDR both. The concept of SDR itself is just hardly 40 year old. Uh, and that basically got enabled because of the advancement in the uh, signal processing part. That means the uh, our software processor, DSP processors, A6, all those things became uh, um, means uh, Feasible FFT had anyway had already come, but then our uh, the programmable DSPs were slower before that, and then uh, more things were happening around the ADC. So somewhere in the 90s, you can say uh, early 90s, that's when the concept of this this software radio actually uh, um, came up, um, and then uh, the uh, early 2000s, the SDR based uh, commercial systems got available. And uh, when we are, uh, uh, and the actual integration, uh, more proliferation of the SDR systems actually happened in uh, last 10, 15 years only. Okay, so uh, then coming to the, um, I'm just actually showing this particular EM spectrum uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, the lowest uh, to the going up to 2.5 gig. Uh, so you can see that there are quite a few uh, type of uh, wireless signal. FM radio is there in around 100 hertz, 100 megahertz, aeronautical broadcast, radio astronomy and navigation, GPS. Uh, then this gen uh, the wireless bell type of short range devices is around 433. Television broadcasting, the the some of the even in India, the 4G LT uh, runs on 800-900 megahertz. GSM, radio navigation, uh, satellite communication, mobile communication typically happening around band three in LTE is 1.8 giga gigahertz. GPS, 3G, one particular band is there in around two gigahertz. And then in around 2.5 gigahertz, we have got Wi-Fi and all these uh, um, Bluetooth signals, right? Now, I have shown all these things. Now, there is a question. I am asking a question. In India, can an engineer create an FM receiver, catch short wave, actually explore astronomy signals, receive and decode GPS signals, watch analog band TV, 
do some spectrum sniping with a just a desktop or a laptop system and with one more with just 30 to 60 dollar yeah that's actually typo it's a 30 to 6 60 dollar instrument is that possible in fact you can connect such type of instrument uh, sdr receiver to a uh, ubuntu windows or even an android mobile also so the answer is this yes you can this is the brahmastra and uh, this is on amazon i am showing the slide this from amazon it costs something like uh, 6500 though typically uh, it, it it gets imported good quality one gets imported from uh, us and europe and uh, it actually costs there um, maybe hardly 3000 rupees but the moment it lands up in india it because of import duties and uh, all that it becomes margins it becomes in 6 to 7k now just to just to list the uh, now now i just should mention quickly here is that this is just a receive this is not a tx so that means you can only receive the wireless signals you cannot really transmit anything but the type of the application the list of the application which are mentioned here is a very exhaustive list it's actually phenomenal it it opens up this this device itself i tell you is opens the uh, possibility of uh, uh, opening to a like a pandora box you can actually spend hours and uh, years together to to actually explore all these options try do lot of engineering and really spend years together you can use so it as, as a question we can break shortly yeah yeah so no not a question just a comment uh, nitin i agree that what you showed is a receiver also for transmitting i mean it's not so straight forward right we cannot simply transmit wherever we want right? so we have to you know have uh, only in the open yeah. bands can be to yeah. transmit right Correct. so it's a little yeah, bit tricky and we, you need a license and stuff yeah. right so Correct, so I correct, think safer, uh, safer to have yeah, a receiver yeah. and be okay with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinit, I will be mentioning that part. So, uh, but I, I will be mostly focusing on the R this this particular receive part because that one is more interesting and it is also more uh, cost efficient. Yeah. So, like the first use case, use as a police radio scanner. because police communication uh, not encrypted i am assuming yeah i believe so yeah this is just a uh, basically there is a big list uh, uh, I and i just copied it of course from a rtl sdr website but right. but it just actually uh, yeah yeah so india have a uh, spectrum like in the us for cbrs it is in broadcast i think there's this ham radio people use but i'm not sure it's the same thing ham radio is definitely there in india yeah uh, ham radio is slightly different from they have one more uh, band for city citizen broadcast radio service or something okay okay not sure okay, so typically uh, the one main application for anybody can be i mean some very quickly is that you can use this rtl sdr the receive only sdr you can actually connect to your android device and you can just uh, check the what all signals are there uh, in a certain yeah. frequency range so for example the rtl sdr uh, actually uh, operates from uh, uh, 500 kilohertz up to 1.76 gigahertz so uh, this is you can actually tune to literally any particular frequency in that range and that is a beauty of that and you can yeah. do all that from software yeah so, so 1.7 gigahertz means yeah, it can do gps right it's gps i think 1.5 or something yeah. 
yeah yes so but can't, can't see one work. application i always wonder and i think it's yeah it's quite it's like in, at home right and nowadays everybody has a wi-fi router like in apartments right so yeah. i think if we although there are applications like i have some application on my mobile which tells me which signal is cloud but that will be a pretty cool one right if i can have like just analyze how's the signal in a given band wi-fi band but of course 2.4 gigahertz we need for that right so there there i yeah. see a practical app well, like a very useful thing that we can do doing whatever they are doing one more example he has given here listening to satellites and the iss so international space station uh, that is transmitting at uh, 145 megahertz so we can listen to that also yeah but but I, I should add just some point here is that uh, even though i mentioned that uh, we can buy this device for only for uh, the and some basic antennas only for 6 7000 rupees but if you if you actually want to try out explore some of these uh, exotic uh, uh, wireless signals you will actually have to spend a lot more money on the antennas because the signal itself may be so weak that uh, yeah. the, you really need to use a very directional and a, a high gain antenna. Got and it, then yeah. it should tune to exactly the, yeah, uh, the that's a target. Good point. Yeah. That's actually a very good point. Yeah. So it's, it's like a photography and twist. They buy one set, but then the actual, they spend much more money on the, the lenses. So this this uh, this technology is 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 along the same lines. You can buy the basic stuff for less, but then if you want to do more advanced stuff, you need to spend money on antennas. Yeah. So basically, I just wanted to show that uh, uh, one more. In this thing is that there are quite a few. Uh, I would call it cousins. Uh, I mean, we, which actually sound similar, but then uh, uh, they are actually quite similar. And uh, there is very small differences between all these uh, type devices. Uh, they typically operate between uh, up to 1.7 gig. Their starting frequency may be less, or sometimes the sensitivity may be different. So otherwise, they are almost the same type of uh, uh, devices. Yeah, so uh, I will spend some time on uh, the architecture of RTL SDR. Uh, so let, let's look at this. So uh, we, we saw that we have got a RF tuner stage, and then we have a uh, IF stage, and then the baseband processing. This, this was the uh, middle, middle generation uh, systems, right? And then we have a, the most modern systems where we sample basically do a, uh, uh, through this local oscillator, we bring our signal to the uh, baseband and then, uh, and then do a analog to digital conversion. And then everything else we are doing in the digital domain. Right. And then this one is, oh, sorry. Okay, this one is the mixed type. And this one is the uh, the zero analog IF, where the signal itself is being sampled at uh, very high rates. And then um, everything is happening in the digital. Now, the, now I'll just show you the interesting story of the RTL SDR, how it has evolved. It's actually a very fascinating story about how the RTL SDR architecture has come up. Uh, in uh, around 2010 time, there used to be this uh, in Europe and uh, US DVB-T, the uh, digital video broadcasting uh, uh, system. So the uh, some companies actually uh, created a, uh, a dongle. So they created a small dongles which contained the uh, uh, basically, you connect those are those were supposed to be used with your 
laptops, for example, you connect uh, uh, those to the USB port, and then you actually uh, receive the uh, the uh, DVB-T signal on your laptop, right? So somewhere in 2010, some of the enthusiast, uh, let me just tell their names first. Uh, there, there are three, basically uh, three main guys, the anti, uh, uh, the Eric Fry. So the Eric Fry, he actually did uh, something very interesting in 2010. So he, uh, he actually, uh, uh, this Eric Fry and anti sorry they together, uh, they created some, uh, the uh, Eric Fry actually was able to put the device in the, uh, basically there is a, uh, okay, let me, sorry. Uh, let me just show it. So uh, there, there are two chips, basically, one is the tuner chip called R2820T, and then there is a RTL L2832. To you now, what this guy is basically a tuner chip, and then uh, the uh, this is the demod chip, basically DVB-T receiver. What it did is that is actually uh, sample the signal at the IF, and then uh, then it actually did the DVB-T demodulation, which is actually uh, some sort of modulation. Um, probably I think it is all DM based, and then. It, it also had a uh, USB port, USB handler, okay? So what this guy is, uh, uh, this uh, Eric Fry did, he actually was able to put uh, this uh, uh, this particular chip, he bypassed the DVB-T options. That means he uh, put that in test mode and it got bypassed. So what happened is that the, whatever the digital samples after uh, ADC and uh, down conversion and uh, resampler and uh, decimation filtering, they actually were available uh, at the USB port and uh, he actually sent it to the uh, a, a Ubuntu system. And then uh, later on, the other guy, NT, Apollo, sorry, actually he was actually able to create a, uh, a software part he was basic usb handler on the software part on the uh, ubuntu side and actually he was able to decode it so uh, and then there is one more guy from uh, osmocom company who actually created the whole thing that means the usb uh, handler part on the software part so he actually announced the whatever these two guys did so uh, the command of the NT Palo in 2012 was that I have actually, I am smelling a very cheap poor man's software defined radio because together of these people's attempts and um, their basically uh, engineering, the whatever was the original dongle consisting of two chips, they were able to bypass the uh, DVB-T demodulation functionality and then they were just able to basically control the these two chips from the uh, from the uh, UR, from the Ubuntu system. So they wrote a basically basic driver and the uh, library. So so it actually has uh, uh, started only in 2012, just uh, 10 12 years. So it, the the story itself is very fascinating. How it has happened over um, it started in 2010 and over two years, it, it, this all happened. So now coming to the, uh, I will just show you quickly, uh, basically the, what exactly this, uh, the first chip, the tuner chip is doing. It, it is actually typically a LNA RF filter and then a mixer. And then uh, it, it's having a fixed 28.8 megahertz. And then there is an IF filter. So the IF is fixed. Okay. And then there is a, v, a gain stage. And then the signal is actually going to the, the uh, demod chip, RTL2832. And what 2832 is doing is 
it actually is taking the sampling at 28.8 megahertz 8 bit so this is the catch this is just a 8 bit and then actually it is uh, doing a digital down conversion okay that that was already happening in that chip original chip and then uh, decimation filtering and then already usb control was there the only thing which these uh, two three guys did it is that after this they actually bypass the actual demod function and directly the samples went to the usb controller and then uh, from there through the driver they actually landed up in the a uh, ubuntu linux system okay i mean in this diagram i am just showing a behavioral uh, diagram of what rtl sdr is doing it's basically gain stage is there and then it is down converting low pass filtering adc and then usb control so if you see this is the abstract functionality of what rtl sdr is doing it is it is having a basic uh, um, gain stage filtering stage down conversion mixing filtering adc and then directly giving it to a usb handler chip and then going to the your pc driver so this is essentially what rtl sdr is doing one question here uh, down conversion it will give uh, output at a specific if right yeah arvind so actually that that can be configured that it is a behavioral diagram you are right so this is one this particular diagram is let me show okay yeah so this is this is the actual total functionality which is all happening in the rtl sdr that means a, a if stage this one is a fixed if stage then uh, gain stage and then ndlias filter adc now this adc is also fixed 28.8 megahertz okay and then uh, there is a another down conversion ddc and then there is a decimation filtering and then uh, the samples are going to the usb port okay now um, the bandwidth of the, the only limitation here is that the uh, sampling rate effective sampling rate of the signal which is actually is possible maximum is 3.2 mega samples per second okay so even though the sampling uh, the uh, basically adc is operating at 28.8 but because of the architecture of the whole uh, digital part the effective sampling rate actually is only maximum 3.2 mega samples per second this is the important point to remember so now in this picture uh, this is what basically this is what rtl sdr is doing and then uh, uh, here i have it is mentioned 2.8 because sometimes in some of the hardware uh, the some sample drop happens because of the uh, different uh, uh, usb interface on the host side so typically 2.8 mega samples per second is considered more uh, uh, basically uh, safe safe sampling rate for the uh, signal so uh, so this is I what have a basic question is. sorry yeah. here this diagram i have a basic question you are saying demodulation to baseband done in rtl hardware but demodulation varies with each standard right yeah. ah so yeah yeah that's a good question actually uh, we, uh, here it is shown demodulation to baseband so when we when when it says demodulation actually there is no demodulation happening here it's just it basically means that whatever analog to digital conversion is happening it is basically undergoing digital down conversion filtering and then just uh, samples uh, baseband samples are being given to the host system so okay so yeah, demodulation is the uh, wrong term here can we say that uh, yeah you can say i mean yeah this it's not exact demodulation actually that the original chip had that demodulation dvbt demodulation but that was bypassed that that's the whole uh, uh, got it got it yeah which happened yeah so here uh, basically 
what I have done is that I have put everything in the one hand drawn uh, diagram. So again, uh, this one is the R to A to zero T or T by two. They are all same type of chip, exactly same chip. Uh, just the difference in their basic per basic performance or the name change. So this is a basic tuner chip. Then this is the uh, ADC and then uh, digital down conversion USB controller. And then through the uh, host interface, basically uh, through a driver, the samples are coming to a uh, host system. And then uh, uh, this, this, this is a Osmocom RTL SDR driver, right? So this is this this is typically a, this is a, a USB interface over USB interface, and then on, now uh, once it comes here, it all actually the uh, software part. So you have got a, a API library. Now there is something I should mention here. In beginning I mentioned that a software defined radio system is called software defined because the software is able to even control and configure and uh, put hardware part also in different modes. So now that all is happening through this API calls. So the API call means uh, there is a library of uh, APIs and uh, through those calls, I can actually control this uh, gain stage, VGA. I can control the uh, some of the uh, RF front end gain stage. I can actually control the this uh, frequency right i can tune to a particular frequency and then i can actually control the decimation factor also i can control sampling rate okay so because this is all happening through the usb interface and uh, uh, api library and the sdr hardware driver okay and then once you are able to do that you basically have got all the different type of software applications you can have an, a C, C++ um, custom application. You can have a GNU radio, which is a collection of the uh, signal processing and communication blocks. You can actually take them into MATLAB, LabVIEW. Then there are a lot of uh, open source libraries are there. Then there is a this uh, GQRX, GRC, SDR hash, SDR++. There are many such type of GUI based application which can actually do uh, FM demodulation, AM demodulation means it is inbuilt. You can just need to press the buttons and then you can uh, you can control the gains. So basically this application, this GUI application, they are, they call this API and then through that they are controlling the whole hardware also, whatever is possible, feasible. Yeah, Nitin will okay. take another 10 minutes. Nitin, can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah another 10 I minutes think, will wrap up. Yeah, I will run through. I, I think uh, basically, yeah, I, I have basically till now, I think I've shown that the how this RTL SDR has come up and how, uh, uh, how it is actually interacting with the hardware parts. Uh, basically, how it is interacting with the software applications and different type of libraries. Yeah, and just multiple different cousins from the same different manufacturers are making. They are but basically make have, uh, they are uh, some of these. Uh, uh, they are using some different uh, tuner chip and uh, they are improving. Some of them are actually claim to improve the sensitivity and the SNR of the whole uh, um, SDR. Right. So you can see actually clearly so, that. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, interestingly, nothing covered the 2.4 gigahertz band, right? In the list that you showed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So basically <laughs> the. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it actually uh, starts from 500 kilohertz and goes up to 1.766. 1.8, let's say. Yeah. 1.8, something like that, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay. So. 
so you can see actually this one is the tuner chip this one is the uh, real tag you can see the logo of the real tag and then uh, directly to the some peripheral basic circuitry and then uh, this is the sma connector and this is to the host side it basically connects through usb 2 port this is just i am having the same exactly v3 model of the same rtl sdr okay so now somebody asked actually that uh, what is the difference between ham radio and the software defined radio can i do ha uh, ham radio using sdr so ham radio actually is a licensed activity uh, it requires license regulations are there you need to learn uh, certain procedure is there allocation is there etiquettes lot of things are involved it's a very regulated activity so uh, typically ham radios will use a dedicated hardware whatever hardware is coming it's very dedicated specialized hardware and the it's, it's basically tunes to a certain ham radio uh, frequency range okay but the rtl sdr the receive only sdr is you can say that it's a basically simple cheap piece of equipment that can acts as a receiver and it's 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 like a more of a scanner uh, but it is much more versatile because it 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 is actually operates in a very uh, good frequency range starting from 500 kilohertz to the 1.7 gig and uh, only thing is that it requires a computer um, computer when i say you can actually have connect even to a as i mentioned a raspberry pi you can connect even to a uh, 4g android mobile um, so all that is possible so you don't really need a license to use rtl sdr uh, so basically if somebody wants to get into the ham radio type of activity you can actually buy an rtl sdr feel i mean uh, do a lot of exploration and then uh, once you have seen multiple type of signals and then uh, uh, you have operated in ham radio it seems there are again i'm not myself aware fully but i have heard that uh, the ham radio there are certain frequency range uh, uh, which are actually uh, 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 bands where you can actually listen if it is un unencrypted so theoretically it is possible that uh, if you if you actually connect a very um good antenna you can actually capable of listening to the uh, ham radio bands now i think uh, we have spent a lot of time on uh, receive only sdr the the good thing or the the most interesting part about that rtl sdr is uh, its price just for 6 7000 and you already have almost everybody these days has got a laptop you can do plenty of things you can actually spend years just with these two guys okay but then uh, uh, there then there is another full full fledged sdr which actually can do tx also so uh, i'll quickly scan through some of the popular uh, tx rx sdr um, the the uh, the most solid and uh, the best quality Uh, TX RX SDR is undoubtedly the ITS National Instrument ITS USRP B2XX series. So the quality, the spectral purity of these um, TX RX SDR is is actually is the best. Uh, there is hardly any other uh, competition in that price range. Now they these all are based on analog devices. 9361 rfic the interesting part is that they can actually operate between 70 megahertz to 6 gigahertz so that's where the you can go actually whole hog you can actually go from uh, configurable is sampling clock sampling the rate also because it's operate on zero uh, if direct conversion receiver so you can actually go as as is 61.44 mega samples per second it operates again on usb 3 so there are three four uh, models are there typically b200 
that also uh, has got only one TX and one RX. And then it can go all the way up to 56 megahertz. Then B210 actually is uh, the most popular SDR in the world today because it can do two by two, two TX, two RX. Okay. And uh, you can actually go, uh, you can uh, implement a um, 4G, 4G uh, private uh, network and you can actually do the basic uh, of the 5G, uh, 5G also, basic uh, mode also. Now the, uh, yeah. So just, just to show quickly the, how the, this, this whole uh, architecture looks like. Similar, it is similar to the RTL SDR. Here we have got instead of USB 2, we have got USB 3, 5. Then we have got some uh, FPGA, which takes care of the, uh, the driver between the host and uh, um, this B210 actually is called UHD interface. And uh, the there is a logic to decode that and uh, uh, sync. And then this is the down converter and uh, uh, up converter part and then this is the AD9361 chip and then uh, all the other there is a GPS to have a very precise clock there is a optional GPS uh, clock is also possible on board yeah I'll, I'll, I'll skip this then then there is another I just want to mention there is another similar um, um, type of uh, um, SDR TXRX which has got similar properties as uh, uh, B210, it is called Blade RF. I am actually having this particular uh, uh, SDR. And let me show quickly the comparison. How much did the, you spend for that Blade RF? What is the cost? Yeah, I, I will mention that, Arvind. So, this is the just a comparative uh, table. It does not uh, has uh, this list does not have all the uh, SDR, but many of the most popular uh, SDR. So th the similar to RTL SDR, there is another device called AR Spy. Then RTL SDR is right here. Then uh, Plo2 SDR is from analog devices. Uh, then it does 205 is, is basically similar to B200, 1TX, 1RX, 12 bits. So this is interesting. So this is, so if you see the RTL SDR actually is, has got only eight bits. But the other uh, AR spy, for example, then this, uh, which is again RX, uh, and uh, it does national instrument, this has got 12 bits. Then there is one very popular, uh, recently popular SDR called Lime SDR. Then, uh, then the, there is this Blade RF. So I'm actually having this Blade RF, two by two MIMO. So uh, now coming to the price, because uh, uh, for uh, for companies that may not be important, but for uh, individuals like us who don't have really um, unlimited funds, uh, of course, RTL SDR is the the best device. Then, uh, if you just want to do RX part, then if you want to actually go uh, do little more things, then uh, pricing wise, I would say that Blade RF is comes next to that. It costs something like $500, uh, something like uh, 50,000 rupees, one, one TXRX, one full SDR. You can actually do two by two MIMO. Uh, the, the specifications are similar to uh, B210, but then coming to the uh, B205, uh, this one is just one TXRX. This itself costs something like uh, close to, I would say more than thousand dollar, something like uh, more than one lakh. And if you want to do uh, two TX and two RX, that is B210 model, that goes up to the almost two lakh rupees, one, one, one SDR. Now I should mention here that somebody also was talking about that uh, part, regulatory part. Uh, the, whatever this, particular ITAS or Blade RF, whatever power they are actually transmitting the TX side is something like uh, maximum plus 10 dBm. Now plus 10 dBm power as such is within the regulatory restriction 
means uh, you don't really need to take a license but just to be a good citizen and good engineer you should actually be very careful that you really don't uh, at least uh, you don't uh, create interference in your neighbor because i have found out that with blade rf i can actually go up to almost uh, close to 15 20 feet 15 feet and i was able to receive the signal when i was when i set up a private 5g network 4g network so regulatory wise you are not uh, you don't really need to take a license but i should add here is that uh, you can actually get uh, uh, you, if you want to buy the the best in the price range of uh, 2000 dollar the national instrument it has b210 then uh, if you buy it locally you have to actually uh, buy it through a company because the uh, government regulations want you to buy uh, basically they they are not really allowing the local distributor to supply to an individual hello yeah Hi, Ram, uh, you had a question go ahead yeah yeah i fortunately or unfortunately or luckily i bought two sdrs from portland usa okay lime Which sdrs lime sdrs to okay. uh, 3.0 actually okay uh, so yeah, yeah, basically, basically basically my question is like uh, i have some open sources for working on this uh, uh, lte setups my predominantly yeah. coming from wireless background 4g and 5g wireless um yeah. i don't i can't offer this b210 and other things but uh, i have this uh, 2.0 i mean 3.0 uh, lime sdr specifically so yeah. i wanted time um, i wanted to set up uh, this uh, uh, with hardware with uh, sdr actually because i'm right. i predominantly do some kind of research experiments with the sdrs so okay uh, will there be any help or support that i get i can get from your side uh, for this in order to set up lte at least yeah, LTE. so actually yeah that's a actually very relevant question so yeah i, I, I actually i also got my blade rf uh, uh, sdr two sides okay. from uh, two x through some hand carry um, uh mm-hmm. so actually uh, i would say that best str in terms of support is definitely the itas national instrument b200 mm-hmm. 210 series uh, but correct uh, yeah but with but uh, with blade rf i was actually able to set up this 4g network uh, oh. i should tell you that it was not uh, uh, it was not direct i mean it was it did not happen in one shot because even mm-hmm. though the uh, some of these open source software companies like uh, srs ran and oai which are like mm-hmm. two most popular open source uh, no they software support which actually... the time oh, i think uh, sorry sorry to interrupt they support majority of the time this hacker uh, fund b210 etts they are supporting a lot actually yeah actually But... uh, yeah i will tell you basically the srs ran which actually has got a 4g uh, code base end to end yeah so that one actually supports b210 of course it supports mm. uh, lime sdr it supports blade rf correct but with I blade correct. rf i actually had to do some fix myself in the mm-hmm. uh, some uh, their application code uh, but mm. uh, with lime sdr i have found out that some people have actually were able to make it work i would mm. say that it may not be it may not be very quick but i think it is doable with some with some uh, uh, if you spend some time i can mm. actually i can support you i can give you some hints and uh, uh, some ideas because i myself had some time i mean i actually mm. the srs ran 4g network i was able to set up very quickly if mm-hmm. i would have had a b210 but oh. uh, in the sense of that i had to spend maybe i would say close to one to two weeks 
because oh. it took me some time for me to figure out what was the exact issue so okay. i would say that with the lime sdr you may be luckier and you may do it uh, quickly but again don't think that it will be straight forward it is possible that you may encounter some small hiccups correct no actually i worked completely in wireless i mean the software basically though i am yeah. from electronics background uh, but yeah. these things this fonts and all this terminologies and all the things right how to set up how to tune gains and all these things they are providing this uh, gui software also for the lime sdr but the tunable things that uh, things i am not familiar actually because i left it long back yeah. so right, right. i think uh, yeah, i understand to, what you again that knowledge now to set up yeah and yeah, i uh, think uh, yes yeah i think it is what, doable uh, i think uh, the key to whatever you are asking is that whatever is there in the uh, instructions uh, first uh, mm -hmm. like srs ran i found out that that is a mm -hmm. 4g network uh, code base Correct. that Correct. their documentation is really very very good uh, very good just no, I, made it, i made it virtual rf successful with uh, that two users gnu radio like that virtual rf um, yeah. i mean that uh, zmq is there right zmq library yeah yeah Sorry. that is virtual actually it's not with hardware but that is successful like i am able to get the yeah, traffic that one i think i would say is trivial actually uh, that happens very quickly but connecting Correct. to the yeah hardware. that one i would say is trivial uh, because mm. it happens uh, it, you really don't have to do anything it simply works i know that i have actually Correct. myself tried them but okay. but connecting okay. radio part okay i have uh, to stop you say, guys here it is no yeah. doubt a very interesting discussion but i think uh, in the interest of time we can take it offline anyone yeah, else has I mean. any other questions maybe uh, nitin i think you can share some contact i will connect you offline yeah nitin you can uh, sure, sure. type your email address or something on the screen okay your screen okay. is still shared so people can take note of it also i think this was very nice useful presentation i think thanks for that if you can share yes. the slides i mean that will be quite useful because a lot of information yeah. is put no, actually uh, arvind uh, let me just quickly try i have got one sd uh, on the uh, window side the uh, uh, no we don't have time we are already overshooting 